For President Biden, any holiday break hampered by another round of attacks on the U.S. military by Iranian-backed forces, at least 66 in the last month or so. Ever since the Israeli-Gaza war reached the current level of chaos, the instability and violence has spread, including to Iraq. By Iran-backed militias using a close-range ballistic missile against U.S. and coalition forces. Resulting in injuries to U.S. troops. The Pentagon striking back against enemy forces there using an AC-130 aircraft. Iran and its proxies see uh, the United States as the primary backer of Israel and therefore hold the United States responsible for anything that they're angry at Israel about. And it's why the president has put forward additional force posture so that we can send a strong signal to any actor, uh, nation state or otherwise, that uh, if you're going to think about widening and deepening this conflict, don't do it. Meanwhile, the White House is also concerned that Iran may provide Russia with missiles for its war with Ukraine. Iran is desperate for partners. Uh, it's a rogue regime. So increasingly is Russia. So that cooperation makes sense. But they also both are keenly interested in undermining uh, Western society and the U.S.-led international system. Republican critics saying Biden has been too weak on Iran by unfreezing funds, prisoner swaps, and letting Iran export oil to China without sanctions. Congressman Barry Moore wrote the Biden administration has fully abandoned President Trump's maximum pressure policy, calling it a slap in the face, especially to those in the military. The question now is what next? Could these Iranian-backed attacks on American troops and then retaliatory strikes by U.S. forces draw the two into a more intense conflict? In Washington, I'm Scott Thuman.